Welcome back. I videotaped the tractor yesterday. This is today. It's winter again. Can't you see the joy on my face? Today. <laughs> Today's video is on my flail mower that I got from Besco or Betsco. I'm kind of gearing up for spring because I thought it was spring, but now it's not spring no more. Last year I used the flail mower on the trails to knock down all the little stumps left over from the trees that we cut down. And uh, I caught a couple pieces of oak, good size, maybe two inch shorties and they made a hell of a racket it's kind of scared me a little i'm going to install a slip clutch on my flail mower in case it does jam up it won't mess everything up and destroy anything i saw a video on messix uh, neil showed a flail mower i guess he didn't see it or it was tall grass and he ran through the tall grass and a big branch it got jammed in the flail mower and i guess it toasted his belts and he had to take it to the shop and have the guys work on it or something like that but it got me thinking. It came with grade two shear bolts. At idle, I would engage the PTO. It would shear the grade two bolt. So I took my grinder and took a grade five bolt, put it in a drill press and made my own shear bolts. After doing that to the grade five bolt, I felt pretty good that it would shear off like it's supposed to because it's shear bolt protected. But I ran into some pretty heavy stuff and it never broke. I'm gonna try the slip clutch out and see how that works. This is the slip clutch that I'm gonna install and it mounts to the flail mower side. And this is the slip clutch adjustment sheet. Well, it's time to get this thing hooked up. It was really windy, sorry about that. Can't control the weather. This pin locks the clutch onto the shaft on the flail mower side and it's kind of a cam. So once I stick it in the hole, it'll wedge itself in there so I can just run this tight. All right, the slip clutch is already installed here. Had to cut the shaft, so I spared you on that. You already know how to do that. And then there's the shear bolt. And it comes close to the housing or the frame, but it doesn't hit or doesn't touch there. It was so close, I decided to try to move the top bracket over so it wouldn't be so close to the frame, but then it was just close on the other side. I think it has something to do with the offset of the flail mower. Before I backed her off, 
I took this clothespin and took a pencil and then marked how tight the springs were. So I can tighten her back up. I'm loosening all the bolts now so that the clutch will slip and I'll put a white mark on it and engage it. Now you can see the white mark and I'm gonna engage the PTO a few times to see if I can get it to slip. You can hear the drum continue to turn after the machine's actually off, so be aware of that. Don't go sticking your hands under there. It did finally slip, so now I'm gonna retighten all the bolts to the mark on my clothespin. Now that that's done, we're gonna put the safety cover on, so we gotta take everything back off. This cover stays stationary, and then it lets the clutch spin inside of it so you can't get tangled up in it. Okay, I put the safety cover on and I had to make a hole so that I could put that one pin in there to lock that slip clutch in and put it in neutral. Show you what I'm talking about. See, now you can see that the pin to lock that clutch in. And besides that, it's, it's all covered up now. Grease her up and, or grease her up and then call it a day. This is what it looks like underneath. Those are the 20 ounce hammer blades they're mounted to a four inch drum. This is the Betsco brand, and this is the model number. It's rated for 22 to 65 PTO horsepower. The B2601 has 19 and a half, and it seems to handle it no problem. Well, that's it for today's video. We'll see you on the next one. Please like and leave a comment below and subscribe. And thanks for watching.